Ryan is one of the strongest, if not the strongest character in Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. He has some absolutely insanely high burst damage and some of the best area of effect and strongest arts in the game. His old weakness of bad cooldowns has mostly been fixed thanks to the inclusion of level 12 arts which scale linearly and overall it makes him an absolute force to be reckoned with in this game. He's probably my personal favorite character to use and I can't wait to show him off. As always, spoiler warning on the 7th party member because of skill links and menus but I'll try not to show them anywhere else. Please be careful watching this video. And if you enjoy these guides and want to see more content on these games, please be sure to subscribe because it helps me out so much so I can continue to make great content for you. So unlike Shulk, Ryan does not get any special Monado arts. He simply has a talent art. This art is called Mad Taunt. Its goal is to draw aggro from enemies and get them targeting you. He's got some good defenses and a lot of HP, and ideally you want to keep aggro off of Shulk and Melia type characters who really don't want to be targeted, so you can see what his goal is right off the bat. It's got a very short cooldown, which actually makes it very useful in certain situations. It only takes four auto attacks to charge up. If you see aggro isn't on you and you actually want aggro, it's a great talent art to have. Now, because he doesn't have any special arts, he gets access to 16 arts, which you can swap between at will. One of Ryan's problems, in my opinion, is the fact that he has like nine really good arts and only eight slots. Fortunately, you can usually figure out which one of the arts to replace depending on the situation, so it isn't a major deal. Let's go through the rest of his arts. Hammer Beat is an okay art. It does decent damage and draws aggro. It's good enough for the early game, but not really worth a slot, because it doesn't really do much later on, and you shouldn't have any problems drawing aggro if you need it. Bone Upper is an art with an extremely short cooldown that fills the talent gauge when used. It doesn't have the best damage, but it has a combo effect with this next art that brings out its usefulness and potential more. It's the one art I don't have equipped that I think is also really nice and useful. So Dive Sabat, which is the next art, is a very useful art. It can inflict paralysis on an enemy, and if used after Bone Upper, it will lower enemy agility by 25%. Both of these debuffs are great. Paralysis stops enemies from auto-attacking nearly as often, and agility down helps both the hit and evasion rate of your entire party. The effect time is also longer than the actual cooldown, so it allows you to have 100% uptime. It can be very useful in fights you might be struggling with to apply these powerful debuffs to an enemy to support the team. War Swing is an area of effect art that hits four times in a circle. It's actually pretty good in this game because the cooldown is much shorter in this game than the OG game. Only 13.8 seconds makes it a very good offensive art, and the AoE can be very valuable and useful at times. Sword Drive is an extremely high damage art. It also has by far the longest cooldown of all of his art, so that has to be kept in mind. I'll talk a bit more about it later because its true potential can only really be accessed with other abilities. Its long cooldown makes it mostly useful as either an instant burst tool or a chain attack art, so keep that in mind. Lariat is a great damage art with AoE in front of Rhine. It does a good amount of damage and fills the talent gauge when it hits. It's probably his second strongest art and has a much shorter cooldown of 13.5 seconds. I definitely recommend having this art at all times. Wild Down is Rhine's topple art. When used on an enemy that is broken, you can topple them for 3 to 6 seconds depending on gems. It's fast and useful against any enemy you want to topple, so I'd recommend always having it. Shield Bash is Ryan's Daze Art. It's basically the fastest Daze Art in the game and has a very low cooldown of 8.4 seconds. Additionally, it's glitched in this game, so no matter what the level is, it will always have this cooldown regardless of what the art reads. This makes it super good against any enemy you can daze since the cooldown is so short. This and Wild Down can make for a very interesting strategy I can't wait to show off in this video. Now we get into Auras. Auras are abilities that grant your character certain buffs for a certain amount of time. Only one can be active at a time, so I would usually recommend only having one or two in a kit at a time and primarily focusing on the best aura. Ryan's first aura, Rage, cuts his damage so he can take less damage and do some spike damage to enemies that are attacking him. It sucks. You should absolutely never want to cut your own damage, honestly. Plus, there's just better options for an aura. Engage is an aura that draws aggro. That's about all it does, and as such I don't really see the point since you can just get aggro from Mad Taunt and from doing damage anyway. Berserker is his really good aura. It lowers his physical defense by 25%, but increases his strength by 240%. This is a massive increase, and one of the reasons Ryan can do some absolutely crazy amounts of damage beyond what other party members can do. With a certain skill link, you can get 100% uptime, which makes it super useful and valuable as an aura. 
I highly recommend using this as damage can let him keep aggro and end fights much quicker, and the defense reduction doesn't matter since ideally Ryan wants agility to help him tank as well. Last Stand is an extremely situational aura that you can run in fights you're having trouble with. It'll revive Ryan when he dies at no cost to you or anyone else. It even fills the party gauge. This can be good as a last resort option, but it's not really necessary. Anchor Chain is actually another pretty decent aura. Ryan's aggro cannot be reduced at all even if he takes damage, and he becomes immune to knockback and blowdown, so he can basically be doing more damage more of the time. It's not as good as Berserker, but it's at least better than most of his other options. Aura Burst is an art Ryan can use when an aura is active. It allows him to essentially lower some enemy strength, and that's about all it does because the damage is pretty negligible since it's an ether art. This is decent earlier in the game, but not really necessary later on. Guard Shift stops Ryan from moving so he can block attacks. It's not great at all, and I don't recommend using it. Magnum Charge is the other thing that allows Ryan to do some pretty crazy damage at times. It has a long cooldown and consumes the talent gauge entirely, but it will essentially multiply the damage of the next art by nearly five times, and it's independent of other multipliers. This can allow Sword Drive to nuke most normal enemies in the mid-game, and it's still extremely strong later on. This is a great art to have on, but it is worth noting the AI is bad at using it, so it can be replaced if you plan to use Ryan on AI. This along with Berserker can give Ryan easily the highest burst in the game, and with many of his arts having lower cooldowns now, it makes him one of, if not the highest damage dealer in the game. Combined with his debuffs and other abilities with Topple and Daze, I personally think Ryan could be considered the best character in this game. This man is absolutely crazy. So as far as Ryan's skill trees, Spirit is usually the best passive effect for the plus 100 strength, but Enthusiasm can be nice too for the 15% critical rate. Diligence can also get some use for 15 agility if you're really struggling to hit enemies. Naturally, you should want to fill out all of his other skills to have them on at all times, but some particularly good ones include Ties of Friendship for Chain Link Chance, Shoulder to Shoulder for Guaranteed Healing after Chain Attacks, Battle Character for Increased Weapon Damage, and Channeled Pain to fill the Talent Gauge when you take damage. Now, as far as the skill links, here are some things I think that are very good to have. So starting off, we have Underdog from Shulk. This is just an agility up buff at the start of battles with higher level enemies. It's always nice to have extra agility to hit enemies and get your tension up as soon as possible before the chain attack starts and stuff like that. Chain of Friendship. This is a great skill. 15% extra chain link chance. You can never go wrong with having this link. The extra chain link chance is so, so valuable to make sure your chain attacks last as long as possible. I pretty much recommend having this on everyone you can. Ultimate Teamwork, this is another chain attack skill from Shulk. It increases your chain attack damage by 25%. This is just very good for the extra damage increase, especially if you plan on chain attacking a lot. Sustained Spirit, this is another amazing skill that I recommend having linked at all times, especially if you plan to use Berserker. This increases all aura effect time by 10 seconds, and that is amazing in what allows Ryan to have 100% uptime on Berserker. It is an absolutely incredible skill to have. Equipment Expert, this reduces the weight of Ryan's equipment by 10 it's very good because weight is directly correlated with agility, so this essentially gives you an extra 10 agility, which is always going to be valuable. Warrior's Ambitious, this increases attention at the start of battle after a successful start affinity. You know, having tension is good. You know, max tension gives you a lot of great benefits like crit rate, ever, all that kind of stuff, so this is just a good skill to have. Counter Rage, this increases chances of a counter attack. Um, counter attack is essentially when an enemy attacks you, you have a chance of auto attacking them in return. This is just something nice to have. It's only six coins, and it's pretty good to have as an effect to um, link if you don't have any other option. Invincible Hero, this increases your strength. Strength increase is always great. You have to have max HP, though, so if you've taken damage or you've taken aggro early on in the fight and you don't have max HP, it's not that great. But it is low coin count, and if you're going for an, a set where you have, like, Dunban, have aggro instead of Ryan, it's actually a pretty useful skill to have just to increase your damage slightly. Pretty Stars from Ricky. This increases his strength by 15%. Now, you only get two circle slots, and there's another skill that increases it by 50, but the 15% increase at night is better the higher level you get just because of the um, multiplicative increase, increasing it by a little over 70 instead of only 50. And the reason we don't run both is because this skill, Amazing Stars, reduces all of your art cooldowns by 15% at night time. That is very, very valuable. The cooldown reduction is always super, super useful, and especially for someone like Ryan who um, can get a lot of extra damages from the cooldowns coming off as fast as possible, this is very, very nice to have. Ricky Strong, this is just something that it grants immunity to strength down. Ryan relies a lot on his strength to do a lot of damage, so this is just very nice to make sure we're not going to run into any issues with that. Explosion of Energy. 
This increases tension by one whole level every time you use a Talon Art. Now, Ryan's Talon Art has a very, very low cooldown. You can easily get to max tension with this ability. It costs 80 coins, so if you're running out of affinity coins, you might not want to use this if you can reliably get to max tension other ways. But if you want to quickly get to max tension, this is an absolutely incredible skill to have on Ryan since his cooldown on his Talon Art is extremely short. Battle Stance. This grants strength up buff the start of battle. That's very useful for Ryan. We like having strength, as always. Ultimate Strike, this increases the damage of critical hits. Now, Ryan's crit rate with the weapon I have isn't super amazingly high, but with max tension, you get additive crit rate, so this is just very nice to have, since you want to be very high tension pretty much at all times. Amplified Healing, this is just something that costs three coins that I have equipped. It's not really necessary. It increases the HP you receive from healing arts. Ryan has a lot of health, and he's probably going to be getting healed pretty often by, like, Shulk or Ricky or even Sharla if you want to use her. So this is just nice to have to make sure you get some extra healing in. High Speed, this increases your agility. There's pretty much no reason not to get a free agility increase, especially when it's 15. You know, that's, that's very nice to ensure you're going to be hitting more, dodging more attacks. That's just a good skill. Increased strength during night, this is the same thing Ricky has, but it's also on Melia, so we get another 15% strength increase for another 70-ish strength or so, so that's very nice to have. Agility increase from Charla, as you might expect, we like having agility, so this is a good skill to have. There's some other pretty decent options, but I'm not going to outline them all here, these are just some stuff I like to use and some stuff I'd recommend having. So as far as his equipment, Ryan's best weapon is the Atomic Driver. It gives them the highest auto attack stat of any other weapon you can possibly use. So I definitely recommend trying to get a 3-slot version of one of those. Um, as far as his other equipment, like I said yesterday, it doesn't really matter all that much as long as it's like decently endgame gear and has gem slots. Glory Gauntlets is still really good on him just because it gives you a free haste, which is something you can't get on a on armor gem normally. So Glory Gauntlets are just really good all around to have. Debuff Resist is great. 100% debuff resist is better than the one I have on him currently, and I'd recommend having that if you plan on tackling, like, um, Avalanche Abyssey or something like that. I just have the 75% one because I only have two 100% ones right now, and I am lazy. Um, agility up. You probably want the A50 agility up if you want to have a super amazing Rhine set where you have as much agility as possible. This one just has 40 because I only have two with 50, and I'm lazy like I already said. Strength up, really good for um, increasing his strength, which is going to increase his damage and increase all those passive strength up benefits. It's not as good as attack plus and everything, but it, be, it can be equipped on armor, so it's still pretty useful because of that. Now, as far as his armor gems, now, daze plus is not going to be useful against enemies you can't daze, but against certain enemies that you can both topple and daze with Ryan, with topple plus and daze plus, you can essentially topple off them completely by yourself. It's so ridiculous and so funny. Now, if you're against an enemy you cannot daze, I recommend using, like, attack stability in this slot, or even back attack if you're having someone else take aggro, or topple up for more damage against toppled enemies. Otherwise, this is a pretty good set to have. Um, let's see, where is my attack stability set here? So with attack stability, you can get an auto attack maximum of 2,300 and 2,184 for auto attack minimum, so your weapon damage is going to be extremely high when you're hitting enemies, and that's very, very nice to have. Now, with the 947 strength amplified by the 240% buff from Berserker and all the 15% and extra damage we get from the skill links, you can kind of see just how ridiculous Ryan's strength can end up getting here, and that's why he ends up doing so, so much damage. And keep in mind, this is just how I like to set him up. You can easily replace some of these gems with some other things, and if you don't want to go all in on damage, there's some good defensive gems you can end up using, like, um, good footing, um, the... Recovery up, stuff like that, that always helps out a lot too, so keep that stuff in mind. So I promised I'd show you something absolutely ridiculous, so here it is. As you can see, my Ryan is level 1 right here, and I'm going to command my party to just stay behind me. And now I will proceed to defeat Final Marcus by myself. So how is this possible? How am I able to solo this super boss by myself at level 1? Well, it's simple. With the cooldowns for Wild Down and Shield Bash reduced by the 15% bonus from Ricky. As well as the Topple Plus and Days Plus gems I have on Ryan currently, I am able to keep him Topple Locked completely by myself. You cannot miss attacks on toppled enemies, so even though I'm level 1, that does not matter at all. All I had to do to set this up was have Shulk and Dunban break and topple the enemy in a chain attack. And from there, it does not matter what Ryan's level is or anything else like that. As long as I have the gems and the cooldowns, I am able to just completely do the rest of this fight by myself. Once he is toppled, that is it. The fight is over. It looks completely ridiculous, but I can guarantee you it works. You get 4 seconds every daze and 6 seconds every topple. 
With the cooldowns being what they are on Wild Down and Shield Bash, this ensures you get 100% uptime and just are able to continuously topple lock him by yourself with no help from anyone else at all. So if there's any enemy you might be struggling with in this game, all you need is a very specific setup with Ryan and you'll be able to just completely win without any issues at all as soon as you can get them toppled. Well, except for the three enemies that have reduced topple duration or are immune to break completely and, you know, all that stuff. But for 99% of enemies, this will work just fine. Naturally, being at level 1 will cut your strength and damage quite a lot, though, so it ends up taking longer than it could have otherwise. But this is just kind of a demonstration. I'll speed up the rest of the fight just because I don't want to showcase this on for too long. But you can kind of see how insane this is. As long as you're using your topple and days art off cooldown and you're able to cycle through the rest of them pretty efficiently you'll have basically no issues doing this yourself it doesn't take anything except for a setup to do there's not really that much skill involved you can just basically use arts off cooldown and it can be very fun and honestly very interesting to do this and honestly it's just a perfect showcase of just how powerful days and topple locking can be in this game there's pretty much nothing stopping you from doing this against, against most enemies and regardless of their level it really doesn't matter as long as you can just get one topple off against them it's a fun setup to try, and I definitely recommend trying it out at least once if you just want to see how cheesy you can make this game. Now, of course, this will also work at level 99, and since you'll have much more damage there, I'll kind of showcase just how much damage Ryan can end up hitting if you do that. So at level 99, naturally, all your arts are going to do far, far more damage. So I'm just going to kind of show off just how powerful a sword drive can be here. I think, uh, actually, my Berserker ran off right before using that, so it would have done even more than the 64,000 you saw there. So that's actually a little bit unfortunate, but you can just kind of see just how much more damage every single art I'm doing is here. And Ryan's strength is kind of very readily apparent. And if you want to see just how absolutely crazy his damage can get, let me show off a few examples of that now. So the Berserker Magnum Charge Sword Drive combination, like I already said earlier, can just absolutely nuke enemies in this game. It only takes four auto attacks to get up your party meter at most, or your talent gauge actually. So you can pretty much use this combination at the start of pretty much any battle you want to, and as long as the enemy doesn't have an absolute ton of health or defense, you can pretty much just nuke any enemy of your choosing. Like, for example, against this Lake Live Mammoth, I'm able to do 539,000 damage with just one attack there. And if we're going to take this to our old friend Territorial Rotbart, the enemy that gives a lot of people trouble, let me just show you just what we're kind of capable of here also. So Berserker Magnum Charge, Charge Sword Drive against him is also going to do a lot of damage. And keep in mind, even if the Sword Drive doesn't kill them, you still have a lot of other powerful arts you can use with Berserker Active to try to finish off them with Burst, with Lariat, War Swing, stuff like that. And 364,000, not too bad outside of a chain attack at all. Additionally, Ryan seems to be extremely powerful as a player control character. He seems to be the optimal choice for the hardest challenge in the game in time attack mode, where his AoE and strength buff from Berserker along with the AoE strength buff from Dunban from his Peerless Ore allows him to do some absolutely crazy amounts of damage. You can see me just doing a lot of AoE damage to everyone all at once, and I'm able to just kind of wreck these unique monsters. Now, some of these unique monsters have been nerfed a bit as far as their health, and that's what one of the reasons the challenge is not as difficult as you might think it is. Once this next phase starts, I'm able to use the Magnum Charge Sword Drive combo to nearly one-shot Gonzalez. And from there, my War Swing is going to end up being able to kill Gonzalez and almost kill Rotbart, and then the Lariat's going to do a lot of damage to him afterwards. You can kind of see how I'm just easily out-damaging both Shulk and Dunban right now, which is absolutely crazy since they're supposed to be some of the highest damage characters in this game. And now we get our two super bosses at the same time here. They're not nearly as powerful as they actually are outside of this, though. And my sword drives and lariats are going to do a lot of damage here and um, make the rest of this fight pretty easy. Sword drive nearly nukes Blizzard Belgazus already at four times. And the five times lariat here is going to end up killing Avalanche Abyssey. So Ryan's damage can get absolutely crazy. And that's one of the reasons I have so, so much fun using him. And I hope you guys will have just as much fun using him. And if for some reason all of that wasn't enough to convince you how great Ryan is, then allow me to sh end this video by showing you him doing over 1 million damage in a chain attack just because he's that much fun and exciting. I think that about covers it for me. Once again, big thanks to Nyarlathotep and other members of the Xenoblade community for help with this. Please check out their character guide below if you prefer a text-based format for learning about the characters. If you enjoyed this guide, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and look forward to future guides on the rest of the characters. Thank you all so much for watching, and have a wonderful day.